I, I like that we have multiple guys in double figure scoring. We share the ball well. When we ran our stuff, we ran it well. Obviously, we had some possessions where we didn't have great rhythm, and that's just more of them growing and learning and kind of starting to understand when somebody's denying or uh, pushing you the other way how to continue the offense. Um, but overall, honestly, just we took care of the basketball, did, did a decent job there, did a decent job on the, on the glass. I think we should have grabbed a few more offensive rebounds, something we'll address. But overall, um, you know, we'll, we'll just look at the film and you know, we'll, we'll celebrate what we did well and we'll get to work on the things that need improvement. Ah, it's very emotional. The first thing I thought about was I only need 363 more to catch up to Tony. <laughs> yeah, Ron. Uh, Jacob Kofi, I know you knew, thought he would play a lot coming into the season. Just what did you think of his performance in his debut today? Yeah, and I think Jacob is, uh, you know, he, he was excited all day. He wanted to get on the floor. Uh, he played well. Um, had a couple of defensive breakdowns. And again, that just comes from, you know, him being a young player and understanding the moment. But I'm hoping that this is just a beginning for him, and he can um, springboard, you know, into better performances than this one. I think he's definitely capable of doing it. Brad and then Zach. Ron, uh, on your right, on your left. Hi. Um, What's up, man? <laughs> How you doing? I recognize um, you with all that. <laughs> it's gone gray. Okay. Um, might have been a surprise to a lot of us on the outside that Andrew gets to start at the point. What went into that decision? How long has that sort of been cooking for you guys? And what did you think of his performance tonight? It was a decision made yesterday. So there's been a battle at that position, you know, uh, in the summer, uh, in, in, the, in, in the fall. And uh, we just decided to go with a little more experience. You know, we're not an experienced team to begin with. You know, we don't have a lot of returners. And this moment can be big for some of the young guys. And um, we decided to go with guys that have a deeper understanding of our defensive system. This is a, a really good basketball team. You know, Kevin does a really good job of coaching them. When you, you prepare for a team that cuts back door and runs the Princeton offense and goes face to face and get to the elbows. And they, I mean, it takes a little more discipline. So um, last night, we just we talked about it. And we said, we, let's just go with you know, I mean, it's Blake, who's a second year. You know, it's Rody, who's a second year. And it's IMAC, who's a third year. And then we had two incoming guys, two transfers. So the experience isn't, you know, it's not huge. But so we just decided to go with a group that had just had a little more than the, than the others. Coach, you guys played uh, over on your, your left here. Sorry. Uh, you, you had Blake Buchanan playing some more on the perimeter. It seemed like early he was maybe being a little bit indecisive on the short roll, finishes with five assists, just one turnover. What did you see from him throughout the game offensively? I think that's what we want him to do. You know, Blake is, I think there's more in him. I'm not sure that he's comfortable yet doing the things that we want him to do. But we're, we're going to continue to throw the ball to him. Hopefully he can make some decent decisions. If he can get better finishing, um, he's got to shoot better from the free throw line. I think he could have had a much better stat line if he just made a few more free throws. But overall, you know, first game, he obviously was, you know, played a lot of minutes. He was fatigued. But I think he did a really good job of staying poised down the, down the stretch and kind of helped us organize the offense at times as well. Yeah, and to follow up on Blake defensively, what did you see from him? Especially, there's a possession Campbell had late in the shot clock, and he kind of stood his stood yeah. his ground when Campbell mm -hmm. tried to get the ball in down low. Yeah, no, I'm disappointed we get more shot clock violations. That's the only thing, you know. Um, but I think that again, defensively, Blake, Blake kind of anchors us. You know, um, he's the one interior player that we have that has experience and had a couple of crucial blocks down down the stretch and um, a couple of ball screen, you know, defensive slides that, that prevented the ball from turning the corner. Um, but uh, I, I just think overall he kind of anchors anchors us that way. He communicates well. Um, you know, he just does all the little things. Mike, and then Zach. Run one more on, on Rody. A year ago, I, I know the fans kind of were on him because of the shooting percentage, but you guys really liked the things he did offensively in terms of moving the ball. What does he bring to the court uh, other than, you know, whether the shots are falling? What are the things he does that you guys like? Yeah, I mean, Rody's responsibility is to be an extension, you know, almost like a bridge between the other four guys on the floor and myself. You know, he has to settle us down. You know, he can't speed us up. He has to get IMAX shots. He has to make sure that Elijah gets shots. He has to make sure that TJ gets shots. His responsibility is to make sure that the guys that are supposed to shoot get those shots. And I think that he's really growing into that role. I think he's doing a really good job of it. But also defensively, so I think he's improved the most. I think that his uh, ability to guard the ball has gotten a lot better. He has a great voice. He communicates well. And um, you know, I know that people only look at the stat line, but a lot of other, other factors that go into guys impacting a game. And I think he did a really good job of that. Coach, 
did you hear from uh, Coach Bennett today prior to the game? And if so, can you share uh, what he said to you? No, actually, I called him. I said, I'm beating you to the punch in case you were thinking about calling me. He said, he said why would I call you today? <laughs> That's what he said to me. I said, I, I don't know, I have a game, you know? Um, but no, he didn't say anything. He just, uh, he just said hello. He said, good luck. He said, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. That was it. Your guys took fewer threes tonight than they did in the scrimmages. Was that by design, or was Campbell looking to take that away, especially from McNeely? It, it seemed like he did not have much room out there at any point. No, I think that we decided to play more of an interior game today. If you saw, we ran some post-ups and some high lows, and we wanted to get in front of the rim. We felt like that was part of our advantage today. Um, you know, IMAC didn't get a lot of looks. I watched the film and see why. He's kind of cramping down the stretch. I don't know, something's up with him, but he didn't want to come out the game, so we left him in there. Um, but overall, honestly, I'm pleased with the shooting percentages. If we took third, what, how many did we take? 13, and we made six. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take that all day. Last one, Preston. Yeah, Bliss and Lang were both in sweats today. Any update on their status for the season? Uh, Bliss is just in, nursing a foot. You know, uh, Lang is going gonna, is gonna to rest shirt this year, so. Um, hopefully we'll we'll get them back and we'll get him back soon enough. So, all right, thanks, Ron. Thank you, guys. Uh, Campbell,